Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Pre-Market News and Views by In The Money Stocks. Today is Friday, August 17, 2012. Let's jump right into the charts here. We'll start off with the usual S&P 500 E-mini futures, which are trading lower by about uh, three quarters of one point. So it's not a big decline at all. Uh, markets had a pretty decent rally yesterday on some of the lightest volume of the year, but nonetheless, uh, markets are still trading higher. The dollar um, is pulling back a little bit off the morning highs. Dollar is still positive by about eight pennies this morning. But you can see as it pulls back in, the markets get that little bit of a bid. This is still the most important chart to follow. So we'll keep an eye on it very, very closely. Yesterday, uh, the dollar did sell off pretty sharply. And that did lead to the big rally in the market. If we just rewind the clock here, you'll see right around um, 2 o'clock in the morning. But then once the opening bell rang around 9.30, you could see how the dollar fell, continued to really trade lower throughout the day, and hence you had a pretty decent rally. Once the dollar caught a little bit of a bid around 2 o'clock, uh, the market pulled back a little bit. And then you can see how the dollar this morning is trading up a little bit. And if it de declines again, obviously the markets will inflate higher. Today is options expiration. To be honest, it's one of the most lackluster option expirations I've ever seen. And uh, this is one of the lightest trading weeks of the year. So, again, I think the volume issue has a lot to do with it. But uh, nonetheless, markets are carving out a little bit of a gain. And that's really uh, the bottom line when it comes down to making money. All right, a uh, few other things to look at this morning. Let's take a look at oil and gold. First thing we'll take a look at is gold is trading down about $2 uh, to $16.17 an ounce. Uh, generally, if the dollar is higher, gold will be weaker. That is the normal case. Today, the GLD is trading right around 156.58. It closed yesterday at 156.56. So again, it's a two, point, a two penny uh, change from yesterday's close. Not a big deal. Again, gold is trading inverse to the dollar, and that's really all that matters. Uh, let's take a look at oil. <clears throat> oil this morning is trading lower by 27 cents to $95.33. Let's take a look at the USO here. USO is trading right around $35.65. It closed at $35.56 yesterday. So again, um, really just an unchanged open. Oil's up. USO is up 10 cents from yesterday's close. So we're going to leave it there with that. <clears throat> again, this is just another dollar story. If the dollar starts to fade, then we could expect a little bit more out of oil. Until that time, not a big deal. All right, let's take a look at some uh, other things in the news. First thing you want to uh, talk about quickly is the European markets. European markets this morning are basically um, holding up okay. You do have Italy trading higher by 1.5% and Spain trading higher by 2%. The German DAX is flat. The CAC 40 is flat. And the London 100, uh, the FTSE 100, which out of, out of London is flat. But they can print their own money anyway, so they're a little bit separate. Um, but nonetheless, um, Italy and Spain are having pretty solid moves today. And that basically comes down to bond yields on the 10-year are dipping just a touch. They're not dipping much. But nonetheless, Europe is holding up pretty decently uh, when it comes to Spain and Italy. And those are the most two most important uh, indexes to follow. The other one is Greece, but I don't have that on this chart. And uh, Greece, to me, looks like it's... Um, there's, there's still big issues there, but uh, nonetheless, the market's overshadowing that right now and not a big deal right now on Greece. Okay, let's take a look at Asian markets last night. Uh, you did have uh, most of the Asian markets higher, but the Shanghai cannot catch a bid, only up three points uh, or one-tenth of one percent. That is problematic going forward, but right now we'll see how this market plays out uh, over the next week or so. The month of August has just been extremely light. And uh, that's that's always favorable for stocks to move higher. All right, let's take a look at some stocks in the news this morning. We're going to look at uh, first one. We're going to look at Arrow Pastel. This is the retailer here. Stock is getting uh, hit pretty decently. It closed yesterday around 1366, trading around 1266 right now. Um, there's a little bit of support down here at this level, um, around the $12 area. But after that, the level I think um, is showing the best support is going to be right around $9.50. Now, I don't know if this gets down there today, but it very well could, and we should be aware of it um, if it does. So, uh, again, I don't think there's a lot to do on this stock, but if it gets down to that level, 
right around the nine dollar and forty five cent level nine dollar and fifty cent area that's a level where you could potentially look for a little bit of a bounce but i'm i'm just not seeing any real strength in this stock um, it's coming off of a bearish pattern which tells me it could go lower so again be a little bit careful with this one um, but around 940 950 uh, if you want to nibble and give it a shot that's your spot let's take a look at Foot Locker <clears throat> Foot Locker has a nice big gap up this morning closed at 3450 stock is trading at 3620 a lot of resistance around the 37 level um, it's not a great Fay candidate because of the fact that it's coming off of the of a, a one-week base, so it has some strength there. But I have a hard time seeing this thing get really much past 37. So if you're an aggressive trader and you want to give it a shot on the short side, probably a pierce of 37 is going to be your level, uh, barring any you know real movement in this market. 37 should be a pretty decent area. Let's take a look at Ann Taylor. Uh, ticker symbol is Ann. Uh, this stock is having a nice big bid coming off of a very, very strong base this morning. Um, also, not only a one-week base, but also a bullish pattern. Uh, pretty good gap up this morning. Trading at, uh, it closed yesterday at 28.14. It's trading at 31.35. This is not the greatest short candidate, but I will say at 31.35, it looks well over, over too overextended for me. Um, I don't know if there's a lot of upside. The one thing you got to take into consideration when you're looking at the stock, it doesn't trade much volume, and it's a little bit on the thin side. Those stocks can trade higher. So here's your best level right now. I'm going to have to go with the $34.53 area and then $36.65. So watch those levels, $34.53 and $36.65. Those are your pullback areas um, for the stock. Again, it's a strong gap, so just realize it can go higher. But I think those levels I just gave you could be... Um, some decent resistance points. Let's take a look at Vivas. I think this stock was downgraded, but <clears throat> nonetheless, um, it closed yesterday at 22.76, trading at 21.30. The level of um, f of support here is really 19 bucks, maybe 18.63, um, right around that level, 200-day moving average area or $19 number, right around that th those areas. That's going to be very very good support if it does get down there. Keep it on your radar. Let's take a look at MRVL. This is Marvell Chipmaker. Uh, stock closed at $12.28 yesterday. Uh, it's getting spanked this morning, trading at $11.13 this morning. Um, again, there's not a lot here. There's a little bit of support at 11 a little bit of support at 10 50 The big level for this one, if you ask me, is going to be down to around the $9.20 level. Okay, maybe 950 could catch a little bit of a bid. I won't rule it out. But the big level I'm looking at is $9.20. If it gets there, believe it or not, I actually like it for a quick bounce. Okay, well, and that's just, this is all just scalping levels, okay? Just so everybody understands. Let's take a look at Gap Stores. GPS is the ticker symbol. This stock has been on a really, really, really good run as of late. Closed yesterday at $34.34. Right now it's trading at $35.21. Um, the stock looks fine at the moment. I don't think there's really all that much wrong with it um, it's a little bit overbought on the bigger time frames uh, but overall um, still holding up pretty well I won't do anything with it no longs no shorts nothing to do here just leave it alone I thought we had a play there but again um, it's getting a little bit overbought but I can't rule out that this thing won't get to 37 38 dollars that's that's a fair possibility again we'd have to see a pattern on the chart so do nothing with this one leave it alone at the moment all right, that pretty much wraps up everything that we're looking at. Again, futures are trading lower by a dollar and um, basically very, very quiet. It's options X. Volume will probably die out today after the first 90 minutes, and then we'll see where we go after that. But again, uh, it's been one of the lightest volume trading weeks of the year. Um, it's, it's probably one of the lightest trading weeks I can remember in maybe even six, seven years. So. Uh, in any case, that is the scenario, so be a little bit on the cautious side. With that said, everybody have a great trading day, and we'll see you on the charts on Monday. Take care now.